Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling channel. Today I'm going to be doing gifts um, tutor project for stencil gold projects and making a gel print collage. So I'm starting off with my large um, gel print plate. And I'm just making a whole heap of paper, so I was having lots of fun doing this. I'm using regular copy paper and I've just got a whole heap of my stencil girl stencils, some of my favourites. And I just was playing around. I had no real agenda with this except I had my gel print and I was just having fun and playing around. So I'm just putting down some heavy body paints. The paints I'm using are from Dina Wakeley. Rolling them out, mixing the colours and printing off some pages. So you'll see me print some original pages and then print over the top of them. So you're getting prints and ghost prints and mucky prints and all sorts of different things going on each page. I really like to layer up my prints and have a lot of things going on them. Um, I will have some pages that I really love and I'll have some pages I really hate. Those pages that I really don't like very much are the ones that I tend to go back and put things over the top of again. So, um, And you get some really happy accidents as you do it. So this is, uh, I think, a Carolyn Doobie stencil. Um, and it's a really simple stencil, like the, the geometric shape of it. But I really love it, um, I think because it's got so much positive and negative space on it that it um, just really lends itself to some really cool patterns. Because it is... Um, so geometric too and has those positive and negative shapes it's a great way to control pages that you don't really like very much because it, it is very blocky so you can see as I go through um, any paint I've got left over on my brayer I brush off onto a page I then go back and print over those pages afterwards now with this stencil and with a few of the other stencils I've actually put it down upside down and the reason for that is um, I want to be able to read the stencil when I've finished with it. So any stencils that have got words on them you need to put them on the stencil um, upside down or the wrong way facing you um, so when it prints it will be the right way. On this print I was experimenting with playing with metallic paints which I don't use very often on my gel plate and I really loved the effect of it. Um, it just gave a beautiful glimmer over the page. So I would highly suggest if you've got any metallic paints in your stash, just chuck them in and, and see what you come up with. So again, this is another beautiful Carolyn Doobie stencil and I've put it on the plate upside down. So when I print the piece of paper, you can still read the pages. You'll notice I'm not cleaning off my gel plate in between because I really love the mottled colours and um, the way it picks up the different colours as it goes along. Um, it's one of my favourite things about gel printing. So I'm not a very clean crafter as it goes along anyway. You notice I'm not cleaning my stencils, but I do do this um, just to get on, off any extra paint. And again, you can see you can get some really cool prints from it. So I'm going in and doing my final few prints. I really like using um, quite dark colours as well as um, an overprint over the top of things. It helps to frame your page and um, your print. You can obviously see this is a, a stencil that I, I love using and it's just so, so versatile on um, the gel prints. So again, going in, one of the things that I do like to do with my prints is to make sure that I burnish the back really well. Um, so that just means rubbing down. You can just use your, the back of your hand to do that. Um, make sure that every part of the paper is actually touching your gel plate. Um, or you could use your brayer, as you saw me do before, just to make sure that everything is nice and um, firmly attached to where it's supposed to be on the page. You can see some wrinkles there. So by using the brayer, it sort of just makes sure that everything um, gets printed in the end. This is going in with the metallic again. Again, you can see that beautiful effect. So I would suggest when you're doing gel prints, my, my biggest suggestion is to be organized, to have a big stack of paper look like I've got there. Um, because you'll want to keep going. Once you get into it, you just want to keep going. Um, to have your paints close by too. Um, you don't have, have to have a huge range of different colour paints, but you know, one or two um, different colours is good to get contrast 
on your final pieces. Have your brayer to roll out the ink or the paint, sorry, and um, have some wet wipes handy <laughs> just um, to clean your hands if you get paint on your hands because um, when you're printing, taking off prints, you sometimes do get paint on your hands. And while that certainly doesn't bother me in the slightest. Um, it does bother me if I put a painty finger mark on something that I really love. So just having something next to you that's um, good to clean up. I'd also suggest if you have room to have your prints around you that you can access them easily. Because you'll notice I'm going back and forth with a few different prints, you know, ones that I've already printed and I'm going back and reprinting over them. So you actually want to sort of be able to spread them out, one, to dry, but two, so you can see what you've already printed and get an idea is, is that piece finished or do I need to add some more to it? Do I need to um, change it up? So I've now swapped it to a smaller gel plate and this is totally um, optional. You don't have to do this at all. You don't have to do any of it really. Um, but I find having a little smaller gel plate I can go back and add some interest to pages that I don't particularly like or don't particularly have any focus. So this page that I had here, um, the colours were nice in the background, but it was just a bit nothing. It needed something to sort of um, finish the page off. So using these focal image stencils, again from Stencil Girl with the um, it's Peacock Lady and I'm not sure what the other one's called, just um, finishes off the piece a little bit. So you can see on those dark pages with that dark blue in the background it was a bit difficult to get a really great print off it but you know it's something that if you tear it up you can do something interesting with. These are the small ACT stamps, or stencil sorry, I've actually cut them apart into their ACT size um, which I find a little bit easier to play with. I think this is a set from Sep Apta but I know a lot of the um, stencil girl designers have got their own sets of these so you can use them in all sorts of different ways. They're great to have those little stencils that you can um, go through and just add that extra detail. So I've slowed down here to show you in my half an hour of playing, so this is only half an hour, how many different prints I got. All the stencils that you can see that I've used here are all stencil girl stencils, um, all the paints I used for the Dina Wakely paints and just the wide variety of prints that you can come up with. You can see some that I loved, particularly that one and this one, that you, I didn't want to do anything extra to. You can see the ones I really didn't like that I was more than happy to add layer after layer after layer over. Um, so these now all sit in my collage box for me to use any stage to tear up for different projects. And that's exactly what I decided to do for my main projects that to show you today. So I'm working in my large Dina Wakely book, um, which is why it's kind of off the screen. And I've got my whole stack of gel prints here and I'm just tearing them up to work in the background. I'm not really worried about color all that much. I did have an idea that I obviously wanted to use one of those beautiful faces, the peacock lady face. Um, so I wanted to have something that would contrast. So I, I decided, I think, in the background that I would mostly go sort of for um, cool colours, um, sort of greens and blues, mostly. Um, I didn't mind that the patterns were all different. It was just to create a background. To glue everything down, I'm using matte gel medium. Um, I ran out of my soft gel medium so I had to resort to ultra thick gel medium which isn't brilliant to do stuff like this um, soft gel medium is much better but it did work the other thing is for this um, because I printed on copy paper it is a little bit easier to wrinkle um, and it also you need a, a bit more glue to actually glue it down nice and flat so you notice I'm putting glue well I put glue underneath my collage pieces and glue over the top, but I'm actually having to put a little bit more glue underneath than I usually would when I was doing something like this. So just play around with what you're doing, but um, make sure you're spreading it out evenly and make sure you're covering over the top too, because that helps seal all the pages together. It makes sure everything's sticking nicely to each other and it's um, gonna be unified at the end. Um, by doing that so if everything's sort of sitting together it works well. Because I'm very impatient I use my heat tool to dry things off as I go along 
Um, again, probably leaving it to dry naturally would be much better, but um, I have no patience. So when I'm on a roll like this, I like to get things done. So now I'm going in with that um, face stencil that I'm going to use as the, bot uh, the head for my body of my doll. And I really loved this stencil. Again, I think it's a step, step after stencil called Unfinished. Um, and I wanted to make sure that the word unfinished was still in the body. So that's why I'm sort of playing around with the um, dimensions of it just to make sure. I'm just cutting out a really simple body shape. I'm not worrying about arms or legs. It's just a simple um, art shape that I can have um, for my body. And you can go back and trim it up as much as you like until it fits where you need it to. So I've got it pretty much how I want and um, I can see some gaps in the background so I'm just going to go back and just patch up those little gaps so everything in the background is covered up and I've got that little bit of blue peeking through which made me happy um, because if you've ever <laughs> seen any of my work before I have a running battle with um, white space so um, doing a page like this where I've got every single thing covered up makes me incredibly happy now I could have used my gel medium to glue this down as well but I was getting really frustrated because I had the wrong gel medium so I actually turned to the um, the Tim Holtz collage medium to glue it down which worked really well um, but if you've already got gel medium out, just use that. Um, it works just as well. So I'm going back in now and adding some detail to my dress, sort of a little collar on it. And again, I'm using some of my other gel prints that I had to um, draw that out. You can see on my other page too, I've, um, I really love that geometric stencil because I've been using it on everything. I'm just going around the outside of my figure now with the Stabilo All Pencil. And that's going to help to... Um, push this figure out from the background. So the Stabilo All Pencil is a water soluble pencil. Um, when you activate it, you get this beautiful inky line come from it. And um, just by doing that, it gives you this instant shadow around your figure and it just pops it out from the background. Because one of the things with doing something like this, because the background is so busy, you need to do something to draw your eye to the figure at the front. And once I'm finished again, I'm just going in to um, heat set it. Now, because I'm fairly intuitive with how I work, please excuse my head, um, I sort of get, got to this page and thought, oh, I'm finished, and then I thought, oh, no, I want to do a little bit more to it. And to be honest, you probably should leave the Stabilo All Pencil to the end, because if you're going to add any extra wet mediums to this, it's still going to react and bleed and so on. So, um I would suggest do that as your final step at the end. One of the things I always do to any figure I add to my um, collage pages is I put in the whites of the eyes. The reason for that is it just instantly draws your eye to it and helps us read it as a human face or as a face. So just by simply doing that, it suddenly brings the face alive. And particularly with stenciled images, um, it really helps um, make them become more lifelike. To highlight the unfinished, I'm just going around with my food able pen and um, putting a drop shadow on the edge of each of the letters. I've also used the Stabilo Woody pencils, which are a thicker, they're the same as the, the Stabilo All pencil, but I think they're designed for children. So um, they work in the same way. They're water soluble, but they're great for mark making and adding chunky lines to your page. One of the things I love to do to any figure I add um, on my page, particularly sort of abstract figures like this, is to add a heart. Um, I don't know why I've got into the habit of doing that, but it's just something I see consistently on my pages. And so again, I just went back to my collage pile, found a contrasting color, cut that out into a simple heart. I love text on my artwork and which is one of the reasons why I love the, the stencil girl stencils I've chosen today but I wanted to add some extra words on it so I had I had some collage paper sat next to me and I cut out the word C but it just didn't look right it didn't fit in with the rest of the page so while I was sort of figuring out what I wanted to do I darkened up the edges of the page 
um, just to give it a little bit of a border and I decided that I was going to go in around my figure and just really lightly with white paint add in some of these words so again just got some of those beautiful positive words sort of floating out from around the figure and this helps again to sort of push her out from the background to sort of not dull down but push the background further into the background and it also gives a bit of a unifying feel to the page so um, after I'd done that is probably when I should have done my stability or pencil um, you can see it doesn't really make a difference in the long run you can still see that sort of shadow line behind it but um, it will make it easier in the end this is another Karen Duby stencil which has got some fabulous phrases and words and um, one of them, the one of my favorite ways to use it is to actually use it as um, separate quotes on the page and to do that more easily I use some washi tape to actually mask off um, any words that I don't want to stencil over and um, it just helps me focus on the word I really want or the phrase I really want to um, stencil so I've got don't you dare give up I can't remember what the second part is. Perspective is everything, um, which I thought was um, really important on this page. And just having those bits of words over the unfinished, I thought brought it all together. And it certainly spoke to me. And one of the main reasons I love to art journal is because I can put my journaling, my thoughts, my feelings into a page. And even though I haven't written on that page, those words speak a lot to me and tell me what I'm thinking. Um, once I got to that stage, I really wasn't going to write on this or journal on this, but I decided in the end I was going to. So I'm just using really, really scribbly lines. This is unreadable. While I was doing it at the time, I knew what I was writing down. It is actual words. Um, but if someone went to look at my journal, they wouldn't be able to read it. So here is a close-up of the papers that I ended up printing and I've used for the collage pieces in the background of my journal page. And here are some close-ups of the final page. And you can see by gel printing a whole heap of pages, some people wonder what to do with them. It's so much fun to actually print them, but you then go, oh, how do I actually use them? So that's why I really wanted to do this finished journal page for you because by just tearing them up and using them as collage fodder just really helps you um, be loose and free with what you're doing and just have all that beautiful pattern and interest in the background. Thank you so much for watching this very long video. I really hope you enjoy it and you take some things away from it. Please check out the links below to the um, Stencil Girl products um, blog page where you'll find all the links to the stencils. Until next time, bye for now.